Hello, welcome back. So the other day I was browsing around on social media and I happened to see something that caught my eye. Hobby Lobby sells 3D printer filament. Now I understand just the word Hobby Lobby is going to evoke some emotions from some of you in my audience. Oh, come on! And many of you probably just won't care. It's just another store you shop at. Um, so I curiously went to the website to see if they actually had 3D printer filament because I do have a Hobby Lobby located uh, in the uh, town next to me. And sure enough, they had some. So right here on the uh, Hobby Lobby website, and you can see, uh, let me click on the first one. So right now this is black, and you can see the price is gonna change here. So black PLA is $12.99. Red is $12.99. Yellow is $12.99. Pink, $12.99. And then we get to orange. $12.99 and then we get to the wood and the price jumps up to $15.99 and we're gonna have a fun chat about wood um, I, I the, the whole where do they who makes this for them is gonna be interesting and then on here uh, we also have the marble and you can see the price has jumped up to $19.99 and then uh, rather than clicking each individual one here you can see they have the rainbow silk this is $19.99 uh, this is the uh, black pink combination uh, silk. They have $18.99 and a silver silk for $17.99. So some interesting price ranges for uh, these individual uh, materials. So first let's talk about the price. Those prices are excellent, especially if you can get this locally. Uh, me, I mean, I live in rural Maine. So for me to get filament, it's going to be coming from FedEx or UPS from my favorite vendors. Now I've been 3D printing for well over a decade and I can tell you the one lesson that I've learned is don't always buy the cheapest material out there because usually there's a reason why it's so cheap, low quality, and it's just gonna gum up your machine. Now I have a couple of my favorite producers. Uh, Ziltec is one of my favorites as well as Polymaker. Uh, I also buy a good amount of material from folks like Printed Solid has their uh, Jesse line and countless others. I really try hard to find a domestically made, USA made materials. Those are my favorites and uh, I like to support domestic stuff. Now that leads me into these materials. So I was really curious to find out and I even asked Hobby Lobby, I'm really curious who makes your material for you because the box itself, um, there's no information on there and on the actual material itself on the decal, uh, the only information you have is you know, it's PLA, you know, whatever it is. Uh, it gives you the print range. Uh, most of these PLAs are 200C to 230. And kind of comically, they also list it in Fahrenheit. As, you know, so that's interesting. So I did message them and I asked them, I said, hey, would it be possible to find out um, you know, who your source is for these materials? Because I didn't care about the regular PLA or the silk. But with the wood PLA, I was really curious how much actual wood is in here because when I first looked at this, sometimes I've seen um, filaments from places I don't know uh, will call tan wood. So I'm thinking I'm getting wood filament. Meanwhile, I get PLA that's actually either light brown, cream, manila, or you know they call it wood. So that's what I wanted to find out. I wanted to find out what percentage of actual wood fibers is in this thing because one of the nice things about these materials, and I have a close-up I can show you as well too, the, the way that this material is produced and wound on the spool, look, it's, it's excellent. I have no complaint there whatsoever. So when I looked at my wood filament, thinking that is it really wood or is it not, I noticed that the, the wind on it was what I would expect for a filled material. So that's interesting. Quick pause real quick. I just want to say I hope you're enjoying the video. If you wanted to support a creator like myself here on YouTube because the algorithm is brutal, please check out my Patreon. I got three levels of membership. Every little bit helps. It helps fund me and keeps me making fun videos like this. If you're not in a Patreon, I also have buy me a coffee. So there's some options for you and I appreciate your support. So here I am wondering, again, this is what led me down the rabbit hole. So who makes this stuff for them? So the official answer from Hobby Lobby was a, the customer service lady was wonderful. She just sent me a brief email saying that uh, it's made in China and basically gave me a cut and paste of the product info from the website.
So you can see here, I basically asked who makes Hobby Lobby 3D printer filament. And uh, one of the names that came up was Alandu. And uh, we'll look at their website as well. And uh, they had mentioned uh, the, some information here talking about, you know, possibly they make it. Uh, they also mentioned another company named Tronhu. And um, that's another one that I, I looked around for. And also, uh, I, I decided to also try, well, what the heck, let me, let me ask Google's, uh, you know, whatever their AI guy is there, Virgo or whatever it is. And uh, one of the hits they mentioned over here was eSun, which I found very interesting. Now, backing up to what we found earlier, I decided to take a look at Tronhu and I saw listings for them. And when I click on their page, I get the unhappy face and in Chinese, and if I translate that, it just says that the page has been removed by the administrator. Uh, let's see if I can actually translate that to English for you. There it is. Sorry, this site has been shut down by the administrator. Please contact the administrator for details. Difficult to do when there's no links to do so. So, so that is here at Tronhu. And there's their PLA materials. Now, the one thing that catches my eye about this is they're using cardboard spools and the materials I have here are all on plastic spools. So I don't know if this is correct. Again, I'm just noodling through. Okay, so this is on the eSun website looking at their wood PLA, the only listing I could find for wood PLA. And as you can see, it's out of stock. It's sold out. So uh, again, total guess if this is the manufacturer for this uh, Hobby Lobby Wood PLA. I'm scrolling through the page here. Well, let's see what some additional details. Uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Yeah, no, not that either. And still not that either. And definitely not that. So, uh, and the packaging and how it's wound. Yeah, so not really getting any technical details here. Yeah, looks good. It's gonna work on all these 3D printers. Fantastic. Let's see, what else have we got? Yeah, some test prints and some basic information. So, yep, yeah, this is not the one. On the table here in front of me, I have all kinds of test prints I can share with you. And I'm gonna start off with white PLA. So all these white prints were done on my Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer. And the first thing I did is I did a temperature tower. So I went through and I modified the G code. So uh, it would print from 230 degrees to 190. And again, not knowing anything about this material, um, I didn't know what to expect. And honestly, this was one of those materials that it actually looks like that at every temperature, it printed extremely well. I found a tiny bit of string, you know, around the higher end of it, but uh, uh, around uh, you know 230 and 225 but uh, and there was one others but again uh, the two things I was looking for was there any moisture do I have wet filament but as we can see coming out of the shrink wrap um, it printed extremely well the next test I did because I really wanted to see how well I had the machine dialed in um, I used the bamboo lab uh, generic uh, PLA profile and I really didn't do anything else to it that that's it the only change I make with my bamboo lab PLA settings is I change the fan because the default is 80% for max I change that to 100% and uh, as you'll see in the close-ups here uh, this did an exceptionally good job with all the bridging uh, the cones the towers and everything so uh, this this test print came out superb and because everyone loves benchies I hate them. I don't think they're a very good calibration tool, but um, the Benji, uh, that also came out outstanding as well. And as you guys know, I'm a fan of cats. I've got two great cats that live with me. And I decided I found this print that had these uh, uh, three guys here. And uh, I printed them at the uh, higher detail setting in the Bamboo Lab profile. And they came out fantastic. So uh, white PLA, Usually with white PLA, especially if you're going to put it on camera and, and show it to people on YouTube, uh, white usually shows all the faults, but this white um, printed extraordinarily good. Next up was the wood PLA, and for this I did the print on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. 
and because wood can be abrasive to a brass nozzle, uh, the Elegoo Centauri Carbon has a hardened, has a steel nozzle in there. So I decided to go ahead and just for starters, I did a little bit of a, <laughs> a little wood benchy here. And that came out, again, just like the white material, came out excellent. Uh, no stringing, no issues whatsoever. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing, I'm going to different machines trying to induce errors and it did not have any issues. Now, when you're dealing with a wood filament, the first thing I think of is Groot because I'm a Marvel nerd. <laughs> and so that's what I did. I did a baby Groot here and uh, this printed very nicely as well. Uh, again, with the Elegoo uh, Slicer, the version of Orca, I just used generic PLA. I uh, didn't touch any other settings beyond that, uh, although I did get rid of their automatic brim. And uh, as you can see, he looks great. There's a tiny string at the top, and that's the only fault I can find. So as far as wood filaments go, this stuff was very easy to print with, and uh, uh, I believe the profile has it set to print at 220. And I believe it's the same story as well, too, with the, uh, the other material, with the generic profile on the bamboo. Uh, 220 seems to be what they use. Now on to the gray. Now the reason why I wanted to print gray was because I saw how well the, what I thought would be the complicated material printed. And I was assuming that white would look terrible on camera. So that's why I wanted to try another color that would probably look better on camera. So what I did, this was done on the Elegoo Centauri Carbon as well. And uh, this is again that mini cow test. And uh, in the close-ups here, you'll see that it had absolutely no issues. Uh, the text looks great, the bridging looks great. Uh, and the overhangs show uh, basically, you know, it has trouble with, with overhangs at 65 degrees. No issues there. Next up, uh, one of the uh, uh, profiles, uh, one of the files that's already saved on the Elegoo that I like is this vase. And I just wanted to see, you know, how well it would do, uh, you know, a, a larger object with some, you know, that whole, you know, swirl here going up the side. And as we can see, uh, this printed out really, really nicely, and again, no issues. Now, you might be wondering why I printed this. Well, in my previous video, I did a review of the Elegoo Carbon Centauri 3D printer, which is sitting here behind me. Um, I had printed the bust, but I did not print the base for it. So this looks just like stone, being a great PLA. And uh, now my uh, 1989 Batman has an impressive stand to sit on. So there we go. Okay, let's talk about what I like and what I don't like. What I like is that, hey, I can actually get filament locally if I need PLA or silk PLA or the marble PLA and such. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be stocking any of the more complex materials that, you know, folks like us like, you know, PETG or ABS. But hey, if you're just looking for, you know, these basic PLA and, and silk PLA, it's a great price and it prints extremely well. And out of the package, I didn't need to dry it before use. It worked fine in two of the machines I tested it on. So, so that's a win right there. Okay, so let's talk about the things I don't like. And really, I don't have anything negative to say about this. I, I wish there was a little bit more information. You know, like, uh, you know, usually when you buy filaments, they include some sort of safety data sheet or a technical data sheet. Uh, essentially, you just get a temperature range and that's it. You're on your own. But for stuff like, you know, uh, wood PLA, which can sometimes be a little bit trickier to dial in, uh, it would be really cool to have some additional info. Uh, the other thing is, as far as Hobby Lobby goes, I know some folks, you know, aren't Hobby Lobby shoppers, some don't care, and that's fine. But uh, I would really love it if someone local is going to stock stuff, if they would stock like domestically made stuff. So, I mean, this stuff all comes from China and it works great but uh, I would really appreciate seeing some domestically made stuff being sold for retail here in the U.S. So, but that's just me. So what do you think? I look forward to your comments in the comment section down below. What do you think of this stuff? If you want to see what I'm up to, keep track of my social media. Check me out on X, Instagram, Facebook, and of course here on YouTube. I thank you guys for watching and please remember, please print safe.